All right, welcome everybody. We are here with Jacob McClintock, or as he likes to be called, Mr. TikTok. How you doing, man? Good, man. How y'all doing? Doing fantastic. Awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah, we're doing the three city thing. You're yeah. uh, you're out of Charleston, right? Um. Well, I yeah. I mean, I live there now. That's where my um, gym and stuff is. But um, I'm. Uh, Born and raised Arizona boy, man. I was born in uh, Yuma, Yuma, yeah, Arizona. Yuma, Arizona, yeah, and then uh, moved to Phoenix when I was like ten or something like that. And then uh, twenty four, twenty five, I moved to Charleston and been there now. So, but I mean, my I got my daughter here, and you know, my my coaches as far as my training and stuff, they're all here. So it's, I, I try to float back and forth, but yeah. I'm, I'm an Arizona boy, man. Just uh, living on the East Coast these days. <laughs> how yeah. was the How was the transition from uh, West Coast to East Coast? Uh, I mean, it's just like anything else, man. You get used to it after a little while. You know what I mean? Um, as far as the training and stuff, man, it's good. I, I've been, I have, I have had my own gym now for roughly about three years, and, and um, I have a lot of a lot of solid guys that are. Uh, that I've pretty much brought up from, from square one, you know what I mean? So I got I got some good training partners and stuff out there and, and whatnot. Um, it, it's more or less just the difficulty of that is when, you know, I'm teaching class and, and trying to focus on running a school, it's difficult to focus on my own fighting and whatnot. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to come out here for the two weeks before the fight and kind of get my bearings and get back with my coaches and you know that type of stuff so mm -hmm. but i mean it's, it's just like anything else man it, it seems a little intimidating to, to move across the united states hey shut up man <laughs> um, damn dog dude it's just barking um hey come on come inside um but i mean it, it's kind of intimidating i guess to move across the states but I, i've i mean i've done so many interesting things in the sport as far as you know where i fought i mean i've in St. Petersburg, Russia, probably yep. in Brazil, yep. Cayman Islands. Um, you know, so that it, it was an easy transition. The only difficult part is, like I said, is if I'm doing something, I need to be able to focus on myself. And you know, it's a little difficult being away from my daughter. But you know, long term, it's it's a good decision because I'm building something that will, you know, hopefully be around after I'm gone. And you know, the people there will be able to carry on the legacy, I guess you could say, as far as my jujitsu and stuff. So that's cool, man. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I love my students. They're they're some of the best guys that I could ever wish for as far as students. And, and uh, it's great, man. Other than, like I said, it, it's, it's far. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trek, you know, to come out here is, um, you know, flying or driving or whatever it's, it's a decent long it's a decent little while but it's, it's nice to be back man I, I have a lot of friends and like i said my family and stuff's all out here all my training partners and stuff so it's, it's good to be back it's kind of rejuvenating if you know what i mean yeah absolutely absolutely you know that's funny because i was looking uh at your resume and just looking at all the places you fought i mean russia the cayman islands like dude that's pretty fucking awesome yeah, man, it was, it, I mean, um, all those were before my 21st birthday. Exactly. How did you even, um, how did so, you book those? Uh, well, my first fight in MMA, I mean, I, I never had a, a amateur fight or anything like that. I mean, I started at 11 years old, so by the time I was 18, 19, I was, you know, I, I didn't really see a reason for amateur. If I could go back, I would have, I would have done maybe 10 fights or something like that, but I was really gung ho. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna jump right into a new pro. But um, my coaches, Todd and Trevor Lally, um, you know, they got connections all over the world and stuff. So they just have people hit them up all the time and go, "Hey, do you have a, you know, whatever weight class? Um, they want to fly out here and do this fight." So I mean, that, the Cayman Islands stuff was really cool, man. I mean, that was I was out there for like two weeks or something like that. No, that's dope. Um, yeah, Ryan Bader um, fought on the same card. Uh, he's because he uh, Bader and CB and all those guys at Power started out with uh, Easy Combat, which is my gym. Uh -huh. um, so when Bader was starting to come up, I think it was his third, maybe third or fourth fight. He got, he he was on the card, so we were out there having a good old time, man. It was a blast. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and same thing with Russia. I mean, it's pretty much a. Hey, do you want to? Um, do you want to go do this fight in Russia? Actually, what happened was I was supposed to be doing that tap out TV show. If you guys remember that, mm. um, Donald Cerrone was on it. 
Uh, that's where kind of he got his name before the WEC and stuff. Yeah, it's, um, it's not ringing a bell. Yeah. I remember Bully Beatdown, but I don't remember. Well, basically what they did was a tap out crew. They had a, a bus and they would pretty much just go do like an episode where they'd go travel around with uh, one of the fighters or two of the fighters and just kind of follow them up to the fight training and then watch them fight and, you know, all that stuff. But uh, I was supposed to be doing that show after the Russia fight. Um, ended up winning, but I broke my orbital bone oh, in shit. my face. So I, I had to take time off. And right after that um, was when Mask ended up getting into that accident and passing away so it, it was a, it was a it was an interesting time for me at least you know because at that point it was like win this fight get on that show should be able to get in the UFC um, and then with me fracturing my eye and, and uh, you know situation that with the mask and stuff it just didn't end up happening so Ended up going back to the drawing board and, you know, hitting up a couple other little fights and stuff. And ended up going to Brazil. And uh, that was an interesting time as well. I've had, I've had some interesting fights, man. It sounds it's like it. <laughs> it sounds um, like the guy, it, man. The guy that I actually fought in Russia, um, he's in the UFC now. He, uh, he uh, let's see, he's fought, like, Damian Maya. He went to a decision with Damian Maya. Uh, he beat Paul Daly, a couple other guys like that. Um, but he beat the shit out of me for four minutes, and <laughs> I, 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 the ref was after the fight. He's like, "Man, if you didn't, if you didn't win, I was gonna stop it." But I ended up catching him with an up kick, knocking him down, getting on top, and I put him in a triangle. Uh, and my coach, uh, Todd Lally, he starts counting down the time: fifteen, fourteen, ten. So I start transitioning to an armbar, and literally three, two, one, he taps. Oh, the ref shit. stopped it. So if he would have let it, his arm pop once, the ref was going to stop the fight. Which, thank God he didn't because I ended up winning. Other than, <laughs> you know, I don't really know if you want to call that winning, getting my face broken. But, um, you know, that was cool. And then uh, the Brazil fight, too, man, that was another weird one. The guy the guy that I fought, it was his hometown. He ended up pulling my hair. He kneed me in the balls. He bit me several times. Um, Damn. Really, really dirty fighter. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, ended up ended up triangling him. But again, man, all the you know, it's it's all these things that that I've done throughout my career that makes you know, like I said, traveling across the United States to to open up a business and do things like that. It's it's made it so much more easy when you know I look at it like, man, I fought in in some of the craziest countries in the world against you know hometown people and and have had great success and all these things. It's like, why can't I move across the United States and open up a gym? You know what I mean? So. It's definitely, it's definitely a, a, a blessing to be able to do this type of stuff, man. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a little intimidating going into uh, foreign soil, enemy territory, uh, against a hometown guy and getting your yeah. balls kneed, getting bit, and still coming out oh, yeah. on top. So, <laughs> yeah, man. It's, I mean, that's that's it's, and then you know, it's, it's, it all has to do with the training, man. You know, the one thing that uh, Tony Robbins, you know, talks about a lot is preparation. If you if you prepare for the worst, the nothing will surprise you. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Conor McGregor talks about it too. After um, his little documentary, talked about it after he fought uh, Chad Mendez. He's like, I got back into the gym and and uh, you know all I was all I was working were the positions that I ended up in that in that fight with the guillotine and this that and the other. And he's like, I just worked that so that way next time I got there, I wasn't surprised. I was able to you know defend and, and deal with that. So kind of hard to, to expect somebody to pull your hair and knee in the balls and bite you and stuff like that but again though, you kind of kind of got to roll with the punches man I mean what in my mind I was like you know I could I could complain I tried to tell the ref but he spoke Portuguese um mm. my corner was uh actually uh John Moraga he's a UFC fighter too yeah hell yeah John Moraga that's what's up yeah <laughs> I love that dude so, uh, so he was in my corner and I, I look over at him because I'm in my guard and I look over at him like he's fucking biting me and John goes, fuck that, get up, whoop his ass. Like, you know, like there wasn't like, he was kind of like, well, what the hell do you want me to do? You're in the fight. You whoop his ass. You know what I mean? So that after sounds that, like I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of just, I got pissed off and, and ended up uh, popping one arm out and catching him in a triangle. And, and I held it on for a little bit longer than I should have. But uh, Serves you know, him right. Yeah, it's part of the business, right? Yeah, until the ref pulls you off. Exactly, exactly. Especially in that third world, you know, like that. I mean, I could have, 
I don't could, I don't speak you know, Portuguese. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, I know a couple of curse words, but uh, I doubt that would be the smartest thing for me to say. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Okay, but, so while we're on the subject of uh, geography here, now you've already talked about Russia, the Cayman Islands, Brazil. Um, where would you like to fight if you could fight anywhere in Japan. the world? Japan. I Japan. see. That's what everybody goes to is Japan. It's uh, actually Japan or Sweden. Ooh, ooh. Sweden. Okay. Um, one of my, one of my. Um, actually, it's another long, funny story. But go uh, for it. Go for it. Uh, all right, man. Um, this dude named his name is uh, Pierre Ye. He's a he's a six foot three Asian. Oh shit. With a French name. His name's Pierre. He's six foot three and he's Asian. Wow. Anyways, this was uh, <laughs> back when back when Bodog was going on. Uh, okay. My coach has come back and he he ended up fighting Trevor Frangley uh, oh, in that fight. But my coach has come back and they're telling me the story of the six foot three Asian dude with a southern accent, super <laughs> fucking cool, you know all these things. And, and uh, he ended up being in South Carolina in Charleston, and he's now one of my coaches' training partners. You know what I mean? So. Oh, that's awesome. Really, really small world, man. But yeah. Um, it's it, yeah, it's it's weird, man. It's, it's it's a small small world, but there's a lot of people that do it, you know. Right. Yes, yes, I agree. So now, but uh, he he's fought all over the world, and he he was like, hey, if you ever fight in Sweden, stay for like a month. Oh shit! It is the best place ever to fight the people and all these things, and you know. But Sweden and Japan are my two that I would like to check off the list. Mainly Japan is because the history. That's where, that's where martial arts started. Yeah, the so, history. Um, and I grew up, you know, like I said, I started in this sport in 2001. So when I started, it was, uh, you know, watching VHS drive mm -hmm. tape. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, you know, Sakuraba, obviously. Uh, is, yeah. You know, he's been one of my favorite fighters. But a lot of those, you know, Japanese guys that, that are, um, you know, uh, Imanari and, and those type of guys, you know, Kid Yamamoto was a, a big, I was a big fan of his, especially since he went to high school out here. Um, you know, sadly, he, he passed away yeah, from rest cancer. In and peace. Stuff. But all these guys, you know, I would love to be able to go out there and meet some of them, train with them and stuff. But yeah, Japan and, and Sweden, man, those are my two that I would love to check off the list. Okay, now we've, we know where we want to go. Do we know where we don't want to go? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Costa Rica? No, not Costa Rica. There's another. Um, so, John Moraga again. He ended. He fought. Um, who was it? Who was the other little guy that that was a 125er in the UFC that fought Demetrius a couple times? A uh, little black dude. John Dotson. John Dotson. He fought John Dotson in um, some other country, uh, South America somewhere, and they ended up robbing him of the decision and never paid him oh shit and yeah just basically just just screw him over so wherever that is that's where i don't want to go <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 it might have only been the promoters and and you know that stuff or whatnot but it yeah, leaves a I bad mean, taste my, in your mouth yeah i mean this this sport is full of shady people i mean when i first started the the play the gym that i started at uh the dude was he owned the gym he was the head trainer he had a MMA uh, cage fight, and he was the promoter and matchmaker and everything else. And I watched him take these, these young kids, 18, 19 years old, and throw them into the wolves and pay them $35 and just, you know, ruin ruin their, their, their mental state with that is because, you know, you, you can't have somebody that is a decent fighter fight somebody that has been training for two weeks, you know? Yeah. And, and stuff like that so uh, and for me i mean uh, i've done a lot of messed up stuff in my life so karma is a big thing in my mind so it's like when when you do these fights and, and i mean i understand some some things happen you know shit happens i understand that but yeah if you want people to support your show if you want them to come back and fight for you and do all these things you gotta treat them right make sure you pay them what you say you're gonna pay them and you know when they're out there treat them with the respect that they deserve you know they're out there doing something that i'm pretty sure 90 percent of the promoters out there have never done mm -hmm. uh you know what i mean so again we're the ones making 
that show happen. So treat us with the respect that we deserve. And, and 99% of the time, the fighters will treat you the way that they're treated. You know what I mean? So absolutely, that's a big, absolutely. That's a big thing. And, and um, you know, as far as that goes, LFA, um, I'm very excited to be fighting with them. I've known um, Mark Beery, who, who uh, kind of set me up with a fight. He's a uh, old school guy that I've known from, from back in the day. Him him and his brother and, and those guys were all my old coaches' buddies and stuff. So Nice. Nice. They've, um, so far, I mean, they've treated me really good, man. They're, they've been on point with everything. Any questions I've had, you know, I've, they've gotten back to me within 10, 15 minutes. Um, they've taken care of me as far as tickets and, and money and everything else. and It's good, man. I, I'm very excited to be uh, fighting with them. They have a good good organization. It seems like everybody that's in their top two or three end up, end up in the USC or, or Bellator or one or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's a good platform. Yeah, it's a, a launching pad is what I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You step in that cage, you win, boom, you get launched out of there to a better, a bigger organization. Right, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the thing, too, is I've already fought for Bellator several times. Uh, I actually was in the second uh, welterweight tournament um, mm-hmm. with when Ben Askren won and, and uh, Ryan Thomas, that whole little shebang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually supposed to fight Jim Wallhead and uh, the Volcano Ash thing, so they switched up the opponent. I had to fight Ryan Thomas. It was like a three-day notice type thing, but I mean, I signed a hundred thousand dollar contract at twenty-one years old with Bellator, and damn. So I've been there. I've, I've I've fought for the big shows. I've seen what that's like. I've been in corners for you know world title fights. Uh, you know, I, I was in uh, Ryan Bader and CB CB Dalloway's fights for the Ultimate Fighter finales. Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh out with uh johnny hendricks for his camp with carlos condit you know i've done some stuff out with uh ben henderson at the lab and, and you know did a little training with those guys so i've seen what it takes to do this stuff and, and how you need to treat people and you know to get that respect and whatnot so it's just it's all about making a name for yourself and doing it in a good way you know what i mean treating people with that respect and making sure that you fight hard and you know little things like that yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking the whole uh, respect and how it's coming back to the sport. I mean, don't get me wrong, so, you know, sometimes trash talk will, you know, get you real pumped for a fight. But at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, you're nothing without respect, so. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, too, is, is for me, the trash talking is, I feel like it's part of it. It's a necessity at some times, you know, at, at some points in careers. Mm-hmm. But if you're fighting for a show that has three or four hundred people showing up to watch it and it's a little janky show you don't have to put on that conor mcgregor act and act like you know what i mean yeah yeah that stuff that stuff is unnecessary now if you're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars and or millions and all these things and you know you pumping up the fight like that makes it interesting for people to buy it yes do it after the fight if you don't get up and you know shake their hand and and da 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 that's the respect that, that, you know, if you watch, like I said, like the um, Nate Diaz and, and Conor McGregor, after after their fights, they hug each other. It's yep. a great fucking fight, man. You're, yep. you know, that respect. Even though there was so much animosity built up that, you know, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, it makes it interesting. You know, it definitely adds some drama and, you know, whatnot like that. It gets people, it gets people interested in what's going to happen with that. So, I, I, I like I said, I, as far as me personally, I'm not a big shit talker. I don't really have to do that to get myself pumped up. Um, but if somebody wants to, you know, go back and forth, I'll, I don't mind it, man. That shit doesn't get to me. My, my, the way that I train physically, mentally is, is to be prepared for anything. So whether you're quiet, whether you're loud, I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to fight the way I want to fight. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's going to be it, you know, so. I don't. I don't really get carried away and all that stuff. Um, maybe when I was younger and stuff. I'm 31 now, so I, I've you know been around for a little while. Mm-hmm. I don't. Re- I know that I don't really need to do that, especially at this level. You know, um, it's it's not really a big thing now. Talking about yourself and pumping yourself up. You know, talking about your accolades, things like that. I can understand that, but I don't. I don't like I said. My opponent. Um, fuck. What's his name? Hey, Raymond. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm bad about names, man. Um, I don't have nothing bad to say about him. I think, you know, he, I, I heard that he's a wrestling coach for kids and he does a lot of stuff with, you know, the community and helping them, which is awesome. I, I you know, got mad respect for him for that stuff, you know, but 
again, it's a fight. It's a competition, man. I'm going out there to win. I'm going out there to, to prove that I'm, you know, I'm better than him. At the end of the day, I'm going to shake his hand and give him, you know, a high five, maybe buy him a beer afterwards. But, yeah, man, it, it, to me, it's a competition. It's not even really a fight. You know, um, a lot of people get too caught up in it. And in all reality, it, it, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to punch you. You're going to punch him. You're going to try to submit him. He's going to try to submit you. It's just who could do it better. So one of the best things to do for me, at least, is to be as calm as possible. If I get too hype and too pumped and, you know, it, it ends up being my downfall more than more than doing me good, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, uh, Jonathan, are you there? I'm still here. I'm just enjoying the the listening festivities over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the co-host. I think he's got a couple questions for you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, shoot. Oh, yeah, I got just a couple for you. Um, the first one I got for you, um, I know you touched a little bit, you know, on uh, fighting uh, for Bellator. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, um, and uh, with you fighting with the LFA and LFA being one of the biggest uh, uh, career launching ads uh, to all the other organizations, would you consider uh, resigning if they came knocking? Or uh, Bellator? Are you, uh, no. Uh, yes. Or LFA. Yes, yes. Uh, for Bellator, or yeah. uh, where are you waiting to go to the USC? No, oh, okay, so yeah, I, I did an interview last night, and you kind of asked me the same thing about like where I wanted to go, and I'll kind of give you guys the same answer. Like right now, man, I'm, I'm focused on this fight, this opponent, um, mm -hmm. and, and you know, as far as where I want to go, it, it's kind of, I'm playing it by ear right now, man. Like I said, I got a gym, I got a successful gym, I'm, you know, able to pay my bills, I'm, I'm doing, you know, that side of my, my business, and, and I'm making money with that, but... The fighting and stuff is more of a personal thing. Um, so the whole Bellator thing, man, there's a long story with drugs and alcohol with that, but uh, I, I've had a lot of issues with drugs and, and stuff like that my whole career, um, whether it be uh, opiates like pills, Xanax, heroin, um, meth, coke, alcohol. I've done it all. So both my Bellator fights, the, the camps leading up to those were um, all done withdrawing from heroin and Oxycontin. Oh, uh, shit. And, it, wow. you know, it, I, I had a really, really bad bad night, both those nights. Um, and, you know, it's a learning experience, but, you know, it, it's, as far as where I want to go, I mean, I think one has an amazing organization. Mm -hmm. I think that they're doing big things. Um, and same thing with Bellator, you know, uh, they got 50 cent involved he's given away these million dollar uh you know uh tournament deals like you win this tournament the 170 pound they're doing right now um million dollars and, and things like that so the bellator is doing big things and obviously you know the ufc is is kind of running the show right now but for me man at this point i'm taking it one day at a time one opponent at a time um but if i get a call any i mean any of these shows and, and honestly right now i'm comfortable with doing a few fights with LFA and kind of, because I haven't very, been very active the past few years. Yeah. Um, after my Brazil fight, I ended up blowing out my knee real bad, so I took a lot of time off and then uh, ended up fighting for Bellator again. They did a, a NASCAR event at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, so I fought for them again, and then my last fight, I had a tough, tough weight cut, tough camp. Ended up losing that one, so right now, man, like I said, I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm not in a rush. I'm only 31, but cleaning up my lifestyle, getting away from the bad habits that I had and, and, you know, staying away from drugs and alcohol, I feel better now at 31 than I did at 21. You know, physically, mentally, I feel in a good place as far as that. My biggest obstacle is, is you know, getting getting a little notoriety because I, I kind of I do well and then I and I kind of go away and I come back and I go away you know what I mean so yeah consistency yeah. right now is the big key so uh I already have another I can't really say what it is yet but I have another big opportunity after this it's not a MMA fight but um mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a big big thing so I have that coming up I have a couple other tournaments that I plan on doing so biggest thing right now man is staying active but Fuck yeah, if the UFC or Bellator or something like that gives me a call and they say, hey, we need you to fight tomorrow, you best believe I'm going to pack my shit up and get on that plane. Um, 
<laughs> Either way, you know, I'm a I'm a fighter by heart. I've always been interested in this. Um, you know, I've seen the first few UFCs like on VHS in, in the late '90s. You know, so pretty much since I was eight nine years old, I've been interested in this stuff. And you know, um, I've always been not really a fighter per se, but I, I enjoy the sport. I enjoy the mm. science behind it. You know. Um, not always being the better fighter, maybe being the smarter fighter or, you know, using your strengths and, and exploiting their weaknesses and things like that. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's starting to change too. You know, the, I mean, if you look at MMA from 10 years ago, so now it's night and day difference, you know, oh, the, hell the yeah. difference hell yeah. that you can do the stand up for one, you know, um, karate, throw that out there. Everybody was like, oh, karate, karate will never work. And then you see Leota Machido coming in here and fucking everybody up. Everybody's doing these karate kicks and, you know, this different type of stance and, you know, things like that. So, <laughs> yep. it's, it's always evolving. And that's what, you know, one of the things with me is, like, I'm always watching, you know, UFC, Bellator, you know, one and stuff. And I'm always looking at these guys and being like, trying to figure out how, what would I do? How would I beat them? You know what I mean? So, like I said, man, if they ever give me the call, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready and willing. But, as far as my own personal, I'm not. I'm not reaching out to them. I'm not looking for anything, man. I'm just kind of. I'm trying to stay active and, and you know focus on myself and, and be the best that I can be. And when the time comes, I'll be ready. Yeah, just kind of let the the situation develop and not. Yeah, man. Not as, long, as, long as, I'm, as long as I'm out there putting on a show, and you know making making the fans happy and people people enjoy my fighting style. I feel like I'm gonna be successful in this either way. You know, win or lose. Uh, I mean, if you look at my record, it's not the best record. I'm nine and three now, um, but I've it's never not made horrible it out of the either. Round. No, I've never made it out of the first round. All my wins are first round knockout or first round submission. Uh, I've never had a boring fight, and you know that's one thing that I, I really try to make sure. Because I mean, in the long term, yeah, I could go out there and win all the time and, and be a, a Ben Askren or something, but. I don't want that, you know. I'd rather I'd rather be entertained than than to watch somebody just hump somebody's leg or you know things like that. So <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy it as a, I'm I'm a fan first. So when I watch fights, I want to see something entertaining. I want to see some cool slick submissions. I want to see somebody, you know, do something something to make me go, "Wow!" George Masvidal, Ben Askren, you know that flying knee, yeah. mm-hmm. things like that. It's like that shit sticks with you forever. Well, it's in the history books now, so it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. It's, you know what though? Honestly, the the one thing I got to say about Ben after that man is I don't like the guy, but I, I do respect him for how he's taken it. You know, I mean, he's still kind of he's still kind of a douche, um, but he's taken it very well. You know, to talk as much shit as he talked and to get knocked out in the way he did, and you know, for him to be coming back, and be like, well, that sucked. You know, it's just yeah. Uh, you gotta kind of, gotta kind of look at it like that. But, anyways, I mean, like I said, though, it's, it's my my style and stuff is, is entertaining. I feel like a lot of people end up liking it, and you know, even my jujitsu and stuff. I, I feel like I got good slick jujitsu, and my stand up. I love to stand up and throw hands and kicks and knees and elbows. And, you know, I'm a, I'm an all around fighter, man. There's really not much that you know that I'm not good at. There's things that I could be better at, obviously, but you know, I think. Uh, as far as the way I stack up, I have a pretty good shot at, you know, making a name for myself. I mean, I'm a six foot two, 170 pounder that, you know, likes to bang and has a black belt in jujitsu and, you know, has wrestling experience with some of the best wrestlers in MMA. It's, you know, eventually, if I keep with it, eventually I'll, you know, I'll make it somewhere. But like I said, it's, it's no rush. I mean, I still got plenty of years left on me and I feel good. I feel, you know, good, like I said. Gotcha. Um, well, uh, uh, like I said, I just got a couple for you, so this will be my last one for you, man. Okay. Um, uh, what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not training, whether you're not teaching, you know, when it's just you, family, you know, what what is it that you like to do? Um, well, I, living in, in the south now, you got a lot of, like, uh, fish. You got, like, I live right on... Um, on one of the one of the bodies of water that heads out to the ocean in Charleston, so uh, I could walk into my backyard, drop a kayak in, and head out to the ocean. So I oh, fish out there and I do that stuff. But <sighs> you know, man, honestly, it, 
to be involved in this sport, you kind of have to be in it 100%. So a lot of my spare time ends up dealing with, you know, either running the business, that type of stuff. I'm studying, watching film, learning, um, you know, trying to develop uh, curriculum and stuff for, for my students and making sure that they're on their on their stuff. And, you know, like I said, man, it's, it's a full-time job. You know, it's, it's not a... A lot of people think they're gonna, you know, open up a gym and it's like they're gonna teach a couple times a day and do this and it's like it's not that. Like oh, hell fighting, no. you know, it's it's not yeah. just showing up to class and training. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. You know, developing your fight IQ, learning other moves, learning people's styles, learning how to you know defend certain things and and whatnot like that. So a lot of my spare time ends up being you know with that stuff. But I like to go. I mean, I got a couple students that you know they got boats, so we'll go out on the boat do that stuff i mean obviously like i'm i'm kind of a not really a th- thrill seeker but you know i like i like motorcycles i like anything that that gives you that adrenaline rush um even though i've had a bad i've had a lot of bad experiences with the <laughs> bicycles and motorcycles uh i got hit by a car on my motorcycle one time and fucked me up for a while but um you know stuff like that man i'm trying to trying to um find alternative uh, hobbies that are less dangerous but it's no fun <laughs> <laughs> putting putting a, a model plane together versus jumping out of an airplane are two different things you know what i mean i'd rather yeah. <laughs> i'd much rather jump out of an airplane and sit at home and put one together so but i don't know man i think i think a lot of the a lot of the people that do this too they have that that weird thing in their mind that they like that you know they like that little bit of being scared, like a little, little frightened, a little bit, you know, that adrenaline type stuff. And one of the reasons why we do this, but yeah, I mean, as far as me, man, like I said, it's, it's with this stuff, man, it's, it's all or nothing. So I'm trying to constantly learn. I mean, usually when I watch movies, especially before fights, like I, I got, uh, I got Rocky on right now, I'm watching nice. uh, all, four, all, all the first four Rockies and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm always, you know, trying to get motivated, learn things like that. I read listen to a lot of audibles and stuff and you know whatnot like that but yeah like i said man i like anything that that you know kind of puckers your butthole a little bit <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to put it like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know um but again no, that's one of the reasons why i like fighting man is it's i don't know very many fighters and i mean like i said i've seen some of the the best fighters in the world that you would you would be like man that dude is hard as fuck that in the back of the fight, in the in the dressing room, they're crying. They're literally crying, freaking out about going out and fighting. You know, and and I mean, it's it's crazy to see that when when you when you actually see it. But part of it is being able to control that fear. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with you know, like I said, like jumping out of a plane or doing all these things. Most of the time, when people are scared shitless to jump out of a plane or do something like that, once they get down, they're like, "Oh my god, that was so much fun." Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably how I would be because I'm definitely afraid of heights. And so, uh, oh, so skydiving is like out of the question for me, but I'm pretty sure if uh, my arm got twisted, I'd go up there and fucking jump and I'd have right. the time of my life. I mean, and that's the thing too is like I watch, um, like there's, uh, you know, the, these couple rock climbing videos, or not videos, but uh, documentaries out about uh, Alex Connell kid and, and uh, this other dude that. They're climbing these mountains, free soloing stuff, and I'm more nervous watching that than walking into the cave. <laughs> it, it's just it's weird, man. There's things that you know. There's, but in my mind, when I see that and I feel that, I'm like, I got to do that. I have to do this. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that conquering your fear and, and realizing it's yeah. not as bad as you think it is. You know. Um, but yeah, I'm always into that, like, you know, not necessarily, like I said, a thrill seeker, but I like that stuff that makes you go, whoa. <laughs> he's not an action junkie, but he's an action yeah. junkie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You got oh, anything well, else for him? No, uh, that's actually all that I got for you, man. Thank you very much for taking the time and uh, talking with us. And, uh, no problem, guys. Take it, take it over, Mr. Steve. All right, man. So uh, first off, okay, uh, while you were answering Jonathan's questions, you talked about, uh, you know, drug addiction and all that shit. And I just want to seriously commend you and praise you for, you know, getting over that uh, that that time of your life. All right, man. Look, it, it, that's the thing with this stuff, though, man, is I'm not. 
it's a day to day struggle. No, I there's know. Not a day that, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about, you know, picking up a bottle and chugging it or, you know, popping some pills or, you know, doing something. But again, the man's like, I got a daughter, I got a nine year old daughter. Um, and, you know, I got a lot of students that look up to me and I got a, you know, I got a gym that is successful. And it's, it, when I look at all the things that I've done in my life, the things that really mean a lot to me or that I look back on and I'm like, man, that, that's like the, t- the time of my life has all, all had to do with fighting in MMA. And mm-hmm. You can't be a drug addict and do this sport. You know what I mean? So I, I gave up one for the other. And, you know, but like I said, man, it's, it's an everyday struggle. You know, I mean, I, I wake up every day trying to, keep my mind right and, and, you know, stay focused on the stuff that I need to do. But, you know, a lot of it, man, is just associating with the right people. You know, yeah, you, definitely. You got to be around mm-hmm. the right people, you know. If you hang around with cokeheads, most likely you do cocaine, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Pretty hard. it's pretty hard to, to be around those type of people and not be doing that same type of stuff, you know. You hear but, that, Jonathan? We need to go hang around some skinny people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think that's what we need to start doing. <laughs> yeah, athletes, man, athletes. All right, but you know, like I'm, like I said, uh, that that just shows how mentally tough you are uh, now. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty inspiring. Uh, you know, I just recently quit smoking not too long ago. So Good for you, man. Yeah, I dip. So I'm I'm not I'm not doing too well with that. But that is, <laughs> that is one of my vices, man. I got I got to dip in right now. But well, everybody's got something. I'm just glad that you know it's a dip and not you know hard drugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. Like I said, man, it, it it was a time in my life that you know that that's what I wanted to do, you know, and and I went a hundred percent into that, you know what I mean, and and I mean it. I feel like it was a it was a necessity that I needed, you know, because I had to get that out of my system to be the person I am now, and it's kind of like you know mm-hmm. you don't really realize it until it's over how dumb or stupid you were and you know things like that, but I can look back on it now and and you know. Like I said, if somebody has an issue, I can give them real advice on yep. it. deal with it. You know what I mean? And, and it, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, preach to anybody. Cause like I said, man, I'm not perfect. I'm the least perfect person probably you'll ever meet. But I, I do understand people and, you know, the way the mind works and stuff. And, you know, addiction's a fickle bitch, man. You Sometimes you don't know you're addicted until it's way too late, you yeah. know. And that, that was kind of the issue with me with, with the pills and stuff, man, that, I was training, I'd go home hurt, pop a pill, my pain would go away. Wake up the next morning, feel like shit, pop a pill, go train, feel amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, after months and months of doing that, realized that when I didn't have those pills, I didn't go to the gym. Oh, shit. You know, I didn't do anything. I laid in bed because I felt like I was dying. And it's, and again, man, it's just, it's just one of those things. And, and with this sport too, there's a lot of people that I'm not going to name any names or anything like that, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of people in here in this sport that have addictions like that, especially with painkillers and stuff, man, because it's kind of the easy way for a doctor to be like, here, man, this will heal you. Yeah. Let's take it. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, I'm more of a all-natural guy myself. Um, uh, like the CBD creams and oils and stuff and whatnot, and I use that stuff, but... Is the, the, the chemicals, man, that they put in some of these things, man, it fucks with your brain. And it's not even, you know, it's not even, uh, it's not even something that mentally you can, you can really deal with at times because, I mean, I, like I said, I've done all these things and, and fighting and whatnot. And I, I've sat in a corner crying myself, you know, to sleep at night because I've having, I'm having panic attacks and, you know, these thoughts in my mind about suicide and things like that and and now that i'm clean and sober i've got everything out of my system i look back on it and i'm like god i was a fucking idiot how why did i think like that how could i be doing this stuff to myself you know but again man it's it's life you got to go through some some of these things to to get the uh the i guess the reasoning behind it you know i mean there, I, I feel like there's two two types of people in the world that people that take advice and people that have to go through mm-hmm. the situations to understand the advice. You know what I mean? Like when you're younger, your parents tell you something like, you know, oh, your first girlfriend, you know, most likely you guys aren't going to be together. But, you know, I remember my first girlfriend, I thought me and her were going to get married, have kids. 
No. <laughs> nope. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I remember that it. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, you know, but I had to go through that experience. Same thing with training and, and you know, fighting. Like I said, I, I had a lot of hiccups in my career. And, you know, my coach is telling me, like, hey, man, you're not doing what you need to be doing. You know, you got to clean up your lifestyle. And, and I'm like, no, no, I got this. And going out and getting my ass whooped or getting beat up, it, it's, you know, it, it's made me a better person, even though it's, it's shitty to have to go through it. But Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, you know, I've I've also, you know, walked into a cage to fight another human being knowing that I have about 30 seconds to a minute of a gas tank before I die. <laughs> Damn. You know, being able to do stuff like that it put me into a mind state of, you know, I can pretty much do whatever. You know, I, I, could, I can, you know, I'll fight whoever. I can walk into a, a building and talk to, you know, 10,000 people and, you know, do a decent job, things like that, that only fighting and, and doing the things that I have course of my career that you know is giving me the confidence i guess you could say to, to be able to walk in with my chest out my chin up and you know do my thing yeah so i, I want to thank you for sharing that with us hopefully somebody um is listening to this interview when we put it up and you know they get some motivation or you know take something yeah. from what you said and you know gets their ass off the couch gets their ass off the pills you know and maybe does Absolutely. something productive you know so that's that's really cool thank you for sharing that man because you didn't have Absolutely. to uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, like I said, man, I, I've, I have been very secretive about this stuff for, you know, the past, shit, almost 10 years, but it's kind of one of those things, man, that a lot of a lot of reasoning behind me getting clean and doing what I needed to do is hear other people's stories, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and I, my story is really not that crazy. I mean, I, I do have some fucking stories, but some of these other people, man, they've gone through some shit, you know what I mean? Like their parents getting murdered or, you know, family dying, things like that. that that's real, real stuff, you know, mm-hmm. their, their children passing away, things like that. And they're still fighting and doing what they're doing with a smile on their face. And, you know, those, those people are the ones that, you know, like I said, they, they, they help me get through it. And, and it's not exactly my entire story, but like you said, if they hear one little thing that changes their perspective and gives them another... I guess, at least on life, you know, I feel like that's, that's more important to me than being, you know, kind of holding on, holding it all in, not, ex- not a, um, sharing my experiences, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, I appreciate you guys allowing me to do that, but yes, yeah, like I said, man, it, it's something that I think everybody in this world goes through, you know, if you don't have those type of trials and tribulations throughout your life, you don't really get the feel, the real feeling of, life you know what i mean it's yeah you have yeah. to have you have to have shitty things happen to you to really appreciate the good things you know um you have to get fucked over by girlfriends to realize when you have a good one you need to keep her around or you know when when you're in a good environment around people even though you might not get along with them all the time when they look out for your best interest they're good people yeah you know mm-hmm. things like that man and and you know it's it's life experiences you know I'm Absolutely. only 31, and, and like I said, man, I feel like I'm learning. I learn 20 new things every fucking day, man, about myself, about other people, about life, you know, about everything, man. It, it's just, it's a learning experience. And if you look at life like that, you, it's a lot easier, I feel. Everything yeah. is a learning experience, you know. It's like, why is this happening to me? Or you could be like, this is happening for me. This is a good thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been homeless. You know, I, I my dad kicked me out because I was doing... I was really bad into meth in my teenage years. So I was stealing cars and, you know, breaking in and entering houses and, you know, doing shit like that. And my dad kicked me out at like 16, 17. So I was homeless for a little while. I bounced around to friends' houses. And so now it's like, you know, now that I, I'm able to have my own place and have these things, I, I appreciate it. Mm. You know, I, I, I really do. So, you know, and again, it's like my training partners, my <clears throat> coaches, the people around me, I appreciate them. You know, is I wouldn't be the person I am or the fighter or anything like that if I didn't have those people around me, you know what I mean? So, yeah, my, my, my family is kind of a little fucked up. They all have alcohol and drug issues and stuff like that. So when I was at the gym, my coaches were father figures, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I looked up to yeah. them and they gave me a lot of good advice and stuff. But like I said, man, it, it, this is a, this life is weird, man. You never really know what's around the corner for you. You know, you could be doing great, great things and all of a sudden you wake up with cancer. Yeah, you know, it's. I mean, that's life. But 
again, it's, it's your outlook, man. It's, yeah, it's how you deal with it. You go about it. Um, that? Yeah, you were over here fucking uh, giving me some goosebumps over here. That's <laughs> this is this has been a lot of fun, man. I I I really hope that we get to do this again. Um, I had a yeah, man. I'm always. I mean, I'm always pretty much around, man. If you guys, you know, after the fight or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. Once other stuff comes up too, if you guys want to do another one with the other, the other event coming up, man, definitely. I mean, you guys got my number and stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. Let's fucking do this again, cause. Uh, this is this has been a lot of fun, and it's actually been uh, like pretty informative, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, about I it, man. about ten years ago, I met, uh, you know, I got with my wife, and that was pretty much like MMA for me. You know, once right. I got with her, my whole life just kind of straightened itself out. Yeah, so, man, and that, that's what that's what a good woman will do for you, you know. And like I said, she you does gotta, other things go too, through. but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, you got to go through a couple bad ones to find the good ones. A know? couple hundred bad ones, but yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, man, you're doing better than me. I'm single. <laughs> I'm single. I don't even got a dog. Hey, but, but you, your dog sounds I, lovely. That's the thing, though, man. It, that's what, no, you know, back to that stuff. It's like, you know, the one thing that has allowed me to have a decent head on my shoulders is being alone and being single and focusing on yourself. To know, getting to know me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, what do I want? Yeah. What is the type of person that I would like to spend the rest of my life with? You know, it's not, oh, well, she's nice, and she has a job, and she cooks for me. You know, it's like, yeah, that's cool, but anybody can do that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, the person that they are, how they, you know, if you see somebody broken down on the side of the road, do you stop and help them, do you drive by, you know, that type of stuff. It's yeah. like, I want somebody that, that you know, is, isn't just there for themselves, because... You know, in all reality, man, we're all human beings. We all need, you know, a little pick me up every once in a while or a helping hand. And, you know, it, sometimes the 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 times that you don't expect it and it and it's from somebody that you don't know are the most gratifying. You know what I mean? When a random stranger, when you're at the gas station, you run out of gas and a random stranger hands you twenty bucks. If I hear you go, you remember that. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, it, it, it's 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 nice. So yeah, I mean it's not one of those things man it's, you know somebody does a good deed for you you do a good deed for them and, yeah just know. paying it forward exactly exactly hell exactly. yeah well i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and pay it forward to you and let you get back to your evening um Gee, man, i'm about to do an ice bath so uh -huh. i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> you know i've never done one but i need no? to i need to um so one of my good buddies is actually a wim hof instructor out here in arizona he has a spot here in phoenix but I mean, they, they do a lot of work, man. If, if you ever want to get in, into it and start looking at it, man, just go to YouTube and start watching uh, Wim Hof. It, and like, you know, like we're talking about, like, uh, you know, weight loss and stuff like that, there's so many benefits for you with it, helping with joint inflammation, weight loss, stuff like that. Um, and I mean, it's, it's five minutes of suffering. But again, if you if you watch like the David Goggins stuff, mm -hmm. that's all he talks about is building calluses on your fucking mind, realizing that, yeah, this sucks, but I can deal with this. Yeah, my toes are numb, but I can deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And and you know, yeah, no, man, it, it's something that I highly recommend. It, even if you're not training or fighting or doing anything like that, just just to get your mind, you know, controlled. Being you want to be in control of yourself, you know, and mm -hmm. that it's that fight or flight. You know, you you either gonna run or you're gonna stand your ground and fight. And in that in that cold ass tub, man, it's it's the same process. It's well, I could either hop out and not do this or I can just sit in here for five minutes deal with the pain and I'll live you know damn five minutes is all it is yeah well I mean you could do you could do two minutes you could do three minutes four you do ten it's, it's, it's totally you know up to you I, I'd recommend starting off very slow but I do five minute intervals I'll do like two or three five minute intervals do like five minutes in one two minutes out and five minutes in um, but I, my buddy that I'm staying with now, I told him about him, so I'm about to go get a bunch of ice and have him jump in to see how he deals with it. Well, make sure you get that shit on video. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so uh, before you go ahead and get to the ice bath, um, I want to give you as much time as you want to go ahead and thank your sponsors, training partners, any of that shit. The floor is yours. Go ahead, man. All right. Um, everybody at Arizona Combat Sports, uh, Trevor, Todd, uh, Jameson, all the all the guys there, um, everybody at uh, Gustavo Dantes Jiu Jitsu, um, everybody back home at TikTok, uh, my gym, all my students, 
Uh, they got a couple sponsors here. Let me think. Uh, we got the AZDUI Defender, um, Montrose Bar and Grill, Stone Throat Tavern, um, Thirsty Straws, I believe they are. Uh, my management company, Arizona Fight Management. Um, and, uh, you know, friends and family, everybody that's around me, man, I, I really appreciate it. And, and thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You hear that, John? We just got a shout out. <laughs> Look, yeah. yeah buddy. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And like I said, let's do this again real soon, all right? Absolutely, brother. Y'all have a great evening. Hey, you too. That's Jacob TikTok McClintock. <laughs>